Hey, 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 what's going on, guys and gals? Uh, this morning, we're going to talk about using the noise removal tool in Reaper. Uh, the Reefer, R-E-A-F-I-R. And I've got two tracks laid here. And what I did is I played my speaker uh, in the background. I played some audio to represent the background noise that we're going to try and remove. Now, the two things you need to understand is, number one, I'm having a real bad day. Uh, I got up 1 o'clock this morning to go to work and literally could only think of 25 letters of the alphabet, and I don't know why. Okay, so bear with me, and we're going to try and get through this. So, as we come up here, you, what you need to realize about noise removal tools is there's really two things that's going to affect it. Uh, the first one is the frequency it's on, and the second is going to be how loud is it. Uh, everybody talks about their software. They can go out there, and it's fantastic. And, and there, there is software out there, guys, but it's thousands of dollars. For the average person using uh, Reaper for uh, audio, you know, as far as voiceovers or doing podcasting or, you know, even mixing and mastering uh, audio for music, you're just not going to invest in that kind of money. And honestly, if you do it properly, you shouldn't have to. Okay. If your recording environment is so loud that you've got to come in here and constantly use noise removal tools, you're doing it wrong. So what do we want to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sit here and come up to the frequency analyzer. We just want to see what frequency it's on. So I'm going to come up here to the first track and I'm just going to make a little window. I'm going to trap it. And let's watch this frequency of what goes through here. Okay, so now that we know what the frequencies are, we can sit here and uh, I want to show you something with the EQ. But, you know, knowing the frequency, that's going to show us what's going to affect our audio. And I say this for a reason. Because if it's a real low noise that you have, a, a, a rumble, then you're, you're better off and you can possibly use what is called a high-pass filter. So I'm going to play this again, and I'm going to show you what a high-pass filter does. So let's go ahead and watch it. Now, if I take this and just slide it all the way and keep going to the right, watch the frequency spectrum meter. You see all that disappearing, okay? So if you've got a rumble or, or something in your audio that's right around that, you know, 100 hertz, uh, 125, 150, depending on what you're doing, it, you can literally set up your low-pass filter, and that will take care of it. And the reason I'm making this video is due to a question that's up there uh, at... Uh, you know, when they're talking about they live close to a train track and they're getting this low rumble that comes through, you know, and they want to be able to try and get it out. So, so that's what we're going to kind of try and do, even though I don't have a low uh, frequency in the background of my audio, but I still want to be able to try and take that out. And, and this is the way we do it now. After we've looked at that, let's go ahead and bring up, uh, Actually, I'm going to take and turn this off now. We don't need that. Uh, reefer. Now, I've got mine set on devol uh, default. It's just a background noise cleaner. This button right here, this is what you want, okay? Uh, this thing uh, does five different things. We're going to use it on subtract. I've got it set as the default. It's on precise. Uh, the FFT is 4096, the best quality, everything else. It's just stock, okay? So I'm going to click this box. And you've got to trap this window. You've got to trap your noise. You've got to isolate it, and I'm going to show you why. So at this point, all I would do is hit the space bar. Okay, now that's the noise profile. You see the frequencies? This is why we wanted to look at the frequency analyzer before. Now this tells me just exactly what frequencies are going to be affected by this. So now I'm going to take this off, and let's go ahead and just listen to the audio now. And you need to have one headphones, and let's see if we can hear the distortion, if there's any at all, okay? Okay. Well, I'm trying to do a little...
Now, you see what happened? You see this box right here? It's a very important that you must uncheck this box after you build your profile. So we'll go back to reset. We're going to check it again. We're going to loop it. We're going to go back to the beginning. And we're going to build it again. Okay. We're going to let it play a few times through. As it goes through and builds that, we're going to uncheck the box. We're going to unloop it. And now let's listen to it from the beginning. Okay, what we're going to try and do here is do a little overlay and see if we can get this noise out using the filter. Now, can you hear how my voice is starting to get a little twangy? And we still have not removed all the background noise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this, hold down the control key, and I'm going to raise this up because I want to trap all the noise. But now listen what happens to the audio. Okay, what we're going to try and do here is do a little overlay and see if we can get this noise out. You see what happens. Okay, so if I take this now and I drop it down below the audio, then you'll hear the noise come back in. Okay, what we're going to try and do here is do a little overlay and see if we can get this noise. Out. Now, I'm going to do this again as the audio is playing, and I'm going to adjust it. Okay, what we're going to try and do here is do a little overlay and see if we can get this noise out using the filter with a reifer, okay, which is a subtract. Okay, now as you can hear, my voice is starting to degrade, my audio. I'm able to stop this part of the frequencies, but I cannot stop the other part. Now, for you guys that use Audacity, this is what you cannot see in real time. What you have to do is you have to sit there and select it, and then let it run all the way through your file when you export it, only to go back and listen to it and say, man, that really sounds like crap. I'm not dogging Audacity. It's one of the just my pet peeves is you cannot see it in real time. Okay, you cannot make these adjustments. So on this particular file, there's really not a whole lot I can do. Okay, so now let's switch over to the second part of the file. And we're going to basically just do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and mute this track. We're going to bring up the frequency analyzer. We're going to capture our small window. We're going to loop it. Now let's watch this again. Okay, now if you notice, and I know it's hard to see, but I'm telling you right now, it's the same frequencies, it's just at a much lower volume. Okay, so let's watch it again. So what do we do now? Same thing. I can bring up the EQ and I can show you if you roll it all the way over to the right, it's going to do the same thing. But it's not going to trap the low end because the audio, the music behind me, is not on the low end side of the spectrum. So I'm just going to turn this off. But now let's bring up Reifer and let's go ahead and check it. Now, if you've noticed, I've dropped it over here to a negative 120. Okay, over here, uh, same thing. Uh, it comes stock at a negative 90 dBs. I always drop it down to 120. I don't have superhuman hearing by any means, but I do hear that. I can hear it. So, you know, just come down here instead of negative 90, just come in here and put in, uh, you know, a, a negative 120, and you're good to go. So at this point, we're going to do the same procedure. See, if you notice down here, like I said, it's still the same frequencies. So we're going to uncheck this. Let's get this out of the way, and let's just listen to this part of the audio now, which is basically the same thing I said before. We'll go ahead and solo this out. Okay, now on this particular track, we're going to do the same thing. The only difference is I've turned the volume down on my uh, speakers, and I've gotten closer to the mic. Okay, but the purpose of this is try and clean this noise out of the entire file. Okay, and we're going to call this a wrap. 
Now, as you can see, I came in here and I pulled it down just a little bit. Let's listen again. Okay, now on this particular track, we're going to do the same thing. The only difference is I've turned the volume down on my uh, speakers and I'm gotten closer to the mic. Okay, but the per okay, so at that point, guys, we, we've got it out of the auto, you know, the we, we were successful. So now we've got a little bit of breathing in there, and I'm just going to loop this. I'm going to go through this real quick, which really has nothing to do with this, but I'm going to show you how simple it is to take this out as well, since we're here. You hear the breathing? I'm simply going to come up here, and I'm going to grab my gate. Give it just a second. I got a bunch of stuff running in the background. And we still have it looped, and let's just watch this. Okay, so now that I've gated it out, what I would do, same thing I always do, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in my stock EQ for me, which is the seven bander. And now let's go ahead and just listen to the beginning again and see what you think. Okay, now on this particular track, we're going to do the same thing. The only difference is I've turned the volume down on my uh, speakers and I've gotten closer to the mic. Now, you notice we got a little bit uh, extra volume here coming in with the breathing because I was very close to the mic. So all I need to do is come in here with my gate, raise it up a little bit, and make sure it does not chop any other part of my audio. Okay, now on this particular track, we're going to do the same thing. The only difference is I've turned the volume down on my uh, speakers, and I've gotten closer to the mic. Okay. But the purpose of this is try and clean this noise out of the entire file. Okay. And we're going to call this a wrap. And that's it, guys. So, you know, the thing about plugins, you got to play with them. You've got to come in here and you've got to play with these plugins to see how they work. Now, for you podcasters out there, for you voiceover uh, artists out there, when you finish your track, it doesn't matter if it's an hour long for that particular chapter or podcast, you must start at the beginning and give it one final listen. Because if I take this gate and I sit there and I raise it up, okay, and, and it's, you know, without going back and checking it, this is what you could very well wind up with. Let's listen to this. Okay, now on this particular track, we're going to do the same thing. The only difference is I've turned the volume down on my speaker, and I've gotten closer to the mic. Okay, but the purpose is to try and clean this noise out of the entire file. Okay? Now, you might say, well, Mac, I would never do that. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm better than that. Guys... <laughs> I got all, close to 8,000 podcasts now that I reviewed for people. And I'm telling you, I get it every single week. You know, Dana, how can I get this out of my audio? Brother, you can't. You rendered it. You didn't save the original wave file. You've gated it out. You've chopped it. The only thing you can do is trash it and start over. All right. Take care. God bless. And we are out of here.